everyone. Welcome to a new edition for, uh, of the Sensibility Magazine's um, interview series. Um, today I am speaking with Paul Pu Wo Lee, um, who is coming to us today to talk about um, his experience with dance. Um, so the, the 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 magazine, the Sensibility Magazine, um, this month is featured on dance. And we have a couple of um, written articles, um, and we also have an interview for everyone to watch. Um, so um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'm really looking forward to it today. Paul is very knowledgeable on this subject, and I'm really looking forward to asking him a few questions. So hi, Paul. Hi, Joe. Good to be speaking uh, to you again. <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah, it's really nice to connect again. Um, so. Maybe you can just start off with a, a, a little introduction for people that haven't met you before or don't know don't know your experience with dance or the Feldenkrais method. Just a, a, a little introduction to that would be great. Yeah. Great. Um, so my name is Paul and I am a Feldenkrais practitioner largely because I was a super frustrated dancer. Uh, didn't seem to, well, I somehow fell in love with ballet at the age of four uh, when I was growing up in Canada. And uh, yeah, things were dandy until I got back to Hong Kong, where I'm originally from. And then, yeah, things became hard because in Hong Kong, people are critical. So when I was in Canada, all fun and games, I was the life of the party in the studio. In Hong Kong, in ballet class, it's why don't you have this? You're not flexible. You don't have enough turnout. Your thighs are too big. You shouldn't be doing this. Why is your ass sticking out? Your ribs sticking out? It's just criticism, 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 reminders of how imperfect I am. And um, I still persisted, stupidly. <laughs> it was out of love. And, you know, uh, somehow made it to, to the National Ballet School. Um, even though I had like very limited, uh, more like this uh, hip rotation. And I then moved on to um, Europe to study contemporary dance. And then even made it into uh, some dance companies, Ita Danza in Barcelona, and then the Gothenburg Opera Ballet at that time in Sweden. Uh, and that was when uh, things accumulated like the I, I, I somehow faked it really well, but I always knew that I didn't really know what I was doing, didn't really feel safe, but I pushed on and uh, yeah, got two hernias in the neck and that confirmed that I, you know, it wasn't just, it wasn't enough to just cover the problem with re rehab. So I really sought out a way of working that could um, help me understand because I believe that I should be healthy and also be an amazing artist and maybe I sh would be an amazing artist because I would be able to be intelligent enough wise enough sensible enough to 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 be able to use myself to express the um, health you know and be spectacular because of that so mm. I came to the long Christ method Sorry, yeah. is that is that a thought process that you had at that point? So you were identifying that maybe there was a different way of approaching this where you would feel whole in yourself or? Uh, I Yes, uh, I think me, I wasn't able to verbalize it so well, but it was something that was that was continually on my mind because if <laughs> for the people who do know me, uh, I'm also a very... I'm a perfectionist and I'm trying to be much less so in order at, to have actually the room to grow. So for all of you listening, if you're a perfectionist as well, you know, if, if that's getting you somewhere, great. But if that's stopping you from being blooming into your full self, then challenge yourself and try not to be so perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm practicing every day. Mm -hmm. Anyways, back to um yeah the thought of so I was I was really demanding um because I I, I didn't want to just dance and entertain I wanted to be an artist and I 
I thought, uh, and, and actually one of my big inspirations um, is the Cloud Gate Dance Theater in Taiwan, which uh, at that time, I don't know if they still do, but uh, they were doing this trilogy based on calligraphy. And so the company was uh, Graham based, which is a uh, modern technique, mm -hmm. um, very, very pelvic. Uh, and yeah, very internal. And they fuse that with a form of Tai Chi, uh, Tai Chi Dao Ying, uh, which is something that was developed in Taiwan, I believe. So it was because calligraphy in Chinese culture is very much related to the martial arts, as Joe, you are, you've been uh, in that world for a while now. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it, it was. So health was weaved in to the tremendous technique and elite skill that these dancers yeah. had. So yeah, I went concepts. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and also weaved in with philosophy and it and maybe even to say weaved in is not so accurate because it just, you know, it's the totality. There's philosophy in it. There yeah. is the um, creativity sensing the yeah. sensuality there is power to kill you know in, in like tantra i would even say tantric energy mm -hmm. so i really wanted to embody that and so i think it had always been something quite unspoken that i to be a really high level artist I shouldn't be hurting myself in the process because if I kept injuring myself it just meant that I did not know how to use this okay yeah, yeah. so yeah just a follow-up question to that because I think um it's very common within the western dance world and maybe in the eastern dance world as well like you mentioned about the criticism and you know perfectionism um as as well i think everyone has a high standard of themselves in that world you know so that they're, they're striving for performance to their maximum capacity mm -hmm. um so within that context i think it's very easy for people to begin to ignore their own uh kind of internal sense or internal constraints so if they have some pain it's like yeah, I need to I need to keep pushing through this in order to like achieve my um, perfection, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think kind of what you're describing is um, that you were identifying a different route um, from that kind of conventional mindset, um, which was more like you need to work hard and you need to kind of break yourself in order to achieve the best you can be. Your articulating that you needed to feel healthy and happy and um in tune with yourself in order to be the best you can be so i wonder if you could kind of you know maybe kind of go into that a little bit more in terms of your own process with that yes absolutely um i i think that there is a what you said about people striving to be at their best yeah. that isn't what a lot of people are actually um, doing, I believe, especially I think I can say because I my my background in dance is largely ballet, that yeah. it's not about striving to be your best, but it's striving to be the image of what it should be. I see that is considered the best. Yeah. So already not being a, a you know a certain shape um height actually in in Europe I, I I don't feel like a short dancer in in Europe but that was a also a thing I was criticized for uh, also by my family in in Hong Kong why are you so short jump more play basketball go swim anyways but it, it's I think I really love Felon Christ because it brought me back to how can you strive to be the best that you are mm. and I think I have I had been um, punishing myself for a long time for not being the ballerina I see in magazines. I, I already gave up on the idea of being, you know, 
the um that male dancer or that you know can jump can turn can do all these tricks you know I already knew that I, that wasn't for me mm. and but you know just not having the right uh shape of the musculature the rotation I yeah it I had forgotten that it was it was about being the best version of myself and I really you know one of the the pleasures about being a fallen Christ practitioner and maybe you you know you share this view as well the sentiment is that you actually get to see the beauty of each person unfold because it's unique yeah. you know and that is so special in the world and I think that that is artistic that if everybody just you know was the same flower and it doesn't matter you're just like flower one and you're the same as flower 1307 mm -hmm. what's so great in that and I think it's really when you shine with the realization of your full ability and capacity your own colors yeah that is so inspiring for other people to see as well yeah Can i ask uh, just a follow-up question on on that subject how how would you say that um feldenkrais the feldenkrais method is has been useful to you in in um helping you or seeing it the work with your clients in in that process of them becoming more themselves or kind of you know um flourishing in individuality let's say you know like their own self coming into being more um mm -hmm. how you know what what's the role that Feldenkrais has has played in that process how has it helped that well I'm gonna come at an oblique angle into your question because what you what I thought about first was um why everyone should find themselves their capacity is because how why would I expect my collarbone to be the same as a rib why would I expect the pelvis to be the same as a vertebra up here that when we fully realize our potential then we can be much stronger in the collective uh, effort the unified collaboration mm -hmm. so that was one of the things that again I just spontaneously thought about because I think it's not just about oh I should be an individual and uh, you know it's to be just individualistic but actually in respecting and honoring <laughs> the full glamour of of what you are capable of that means that you would be able to play a much stronger role when mm -hmm. it comes to teamwork so, um so but then to to talk about like you know I think with dancers a, ma a major thing is injuries and mm -hmm. it's associated when you dance you will have injuries and I think that that will not change but let's see what injuries can be preventable um and I think that again it's this dignity of being an artist how can you paint without knowing the characteristics the tendencies of your materials you don't paint in the same way with with oil paint i suppose um to using acrylic to using watercolor pencil marker so yes. i i feel that if how what, it's such a pity that it is the lack of understanding of our human material that causes these um sometimes devastating uh injuries yeah. you know if it's a freak accident there's nothing I would you know that we could really do about it but if it's something that you do recurringly yeah. then let's look at that and this is what I think fallen Christ can really help you with so right. and this is this is the hard thing to really um to really drive home about the Feldenkrais method uh, or yeah, the Feldenkrais method and anything that works on um, a better use of yourself is that the same process that you use to prevent these injuries is, is the same process that 
help strengthen your role as uh, or your power as an artist of yourself. So when you start learning how to how to coordinate yourself in a more harmonious, um, efficient way, you're and and in film Christ, we're also looking for variations, many ways of doing something. That also that means that you have more options, more colors to express yourself with. And then everything becomes a choice, you know, whether it be subconscious for your nervous system when you just have to spring into action, or when you actually are moving from a deeply contemplative, um, well-considered place. So um it's 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 the same thing it's about health but it's also about your artistic breadth right yeah. You, so yeah so yeah i think i mean how i would understand what you're saying is that um something about the process of feldenkrais helps an individual develop self knowledge or self awareness in a way that gives them uh potentially uh, or the potential to avoid injury because of their own self-knowledge but it also gives them access to themselves in such a way that they can create in a different way um, than they would without that self-knowledge um and that was I'd beautifully said <laughs> <laughs> thanks um i'd love to ask you then kind of like taking that forwards into um how perhaps an individual dancer or even someone that's choreographer, a choreographer of dance would then kind of you or have access to their own knowledge of self and how it could inform, um, you know, the process of creating um, a new dance or a new expression differently. It leads me to the word innovation, which I'm really a big fan of because, it, you know, things that have been established before don't necessarily always have to be destroyed, that there is a point, there is a function to why they still exist. And you're always, and I think this is what art is, it's always in question, is there an even better way? Mm -hmm. Is there room for growth, right? Um, so with Feldenkrais as a tool, you get, you, because we can just ponder and wonder, and that's not the point about Feldenkrais, I think. It is giving you um, a way, a method to find out the answers, possible mm -hmm. answers, so that's quite concrete, you know, can I move my shoulder in forward, back, forward, back, forward, back? And then can I go forward, upwards on the diagonal, backwards, downwards on the diagonal? Oh, and then you, you can lift it up and down. So then already there within the 90, like the 90 degrees, you have 90 degrees of, of, of um, choice. And then you can split that into, you know, into, you can split the hairs and then you have even more and more choice. So mm -hmm. it, it's about being able to, dive into the world where you can see options more clearly. Mm -hmm. And so I want to also, you know, talking about being concrete, um, I also want to use a, an example. Uh, so I love to teach Feldenkrais and ballet class combined. Mm -hmm. Full class of Feldenkrais, full hour, 15 hour and a half ballet class. When you finish the Feldenkrais, you're, you're, you're exploring all these options, you know, and of course we have hundreds of these Feldenkrais lessons, so it's endless. And then you, you not only try things, uh, different things out, many variations, but then you stand up and you, and you feel immediately that your body knows something. You do th your usual things in a different way. It feels smoother. You feel, it's just like, shimmering a bit more with sensation you can feel exactly what you're doing so at any point you can you can change things around you're just more placed on your feet that's how I generally feel you know and and it's it's like so tangible so this is what awareness is it's very tangible so then now with this tangibility of yourself and the awareness of choices and this availability of your body to really follow your intention 
I bring that into a ballet class. And generally, um, I would start with plies, uh, which is just bending uh, mm -hmm. the legs down and up. So in, in plies, then you find it, you can spend hours, if not days, finding out all the different ways you can do it with your arm, the weight shift, how that changes in, in your spine. It's, it's moving sculpture. It's like sculpting yourself in real time. So, yeah. And so, so what, what happens in the ballet class is that, that not only are you listening for what is the, the ways, the many ways that you can feel grounded and strong and at the same time fluid uh, doing, doing, one exercise but then you're also considering so you're looking at technique but at the same time you're also looking at your expression and so one of the so another thing that I I like to it's not a joke actually I'm pretty serious ballet class becomes really easy when you think of it as a self-marketing practice because if I if, if I just do my bending and I turn my my, my face here, mm -hmm. this is definitely different than if I do that, if I do this. But now if I do this and I look at you and the, just the movement of my eyeball, it communicates something different. So at any moment, you can, you can have this exercise of caption this. There are so many stories that you are expressing that you are, you are luring out of people's interpretation. So then we come back again to the true spirit, I think, of, of dance, of art, which is to make people feel things, to communicate, right? So, and how are you actually speaking human with people? And, 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 and ballet is, is about grace. It is, and it doesn't have to be, but, you know, it's just easy. I, I think I'm, I'm, in a photo shoot for Vogue the whole time. And it's just, how am I modeling myself? But a lot of people associate modeling with something being superficial and frivolous. Yeah, well, even pressure, like, pressure of performance as well, right? Yeah, well, I, I mean, once you're in a process, like this is what I consider to be a very highly um, artistic process. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to Naomi Campbell, talk to Tyra Banks, right? Any top model, they are artists. They have practiced what, you know, in front of mirrors. They know the effect of like squinting, smizing, right? Entire Banks um, <laughs> vocabulary, you know, is there tension in the face, you know, just the ears pulling back. It, it, if you've taken selfies, as many selfies as I have, you realize that the smallest thing can betray you. And the smallest thing can also just make make one portrait very um, dull and just that little, little shift in angle or the tonus in, in the face, it can make something that looks similar, but with that subtle difference, this can like really shine forth, radiate. It sounds so like something that's applicable to everyone, not just in the context of dance. So, and, uh, so many, I think all roads lead to Rome, right, is the saying. Mm -hmm. And so through dance, it is this, you can call it a practice, you can call it an investigation, a research a, 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 of, of, of humanity, of your humanness. Yeah. Um, so this is how I frame ballet classes because I, you know, if you come into a ballet class, thinking that it is a highly critical place where you can't play, you have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm paralyzed already, but if I can go into a ballet class, actually lean back on this well-known structure of the mm -hmm. class, it will start with the plies and you'll have a slow tendu, you have a quicker tendu, maybe another one. And then you go into your jeté dégagés and then rond de jambe. Like it's, it's such a, like people know the structure and the language. And so you can lean back on that, but then start making all these choices, technical choices at the same time, artistic choices. And you think about what does this mean, right? Then you're weaving, you're manipulating, um, sculpting something which is beyond you. So your movements in dance are 
projected far beyond your body, you know, through you, people see another face of themselves, a possibility of themselves, another spirit. So I really try my best to use Feldenkrais to help people access their own individual possibilities so that, you know, it, we, we become these vehicles for people to feel something and for us to also, yeah, create yeah, meaning. It's a really, really beautiful description. Um, I just in, in the way that you describe it, I get the sense that there is, like you, you mentioned it being about communication, um, and there's so much depth to that. And, you know, it's like the, I don't know, the, the legacy of, of art or performance or dance and how that has been to communicate human emotion in some way and to connect with people, but also help people connect with each other. Um, and the way that you're describing that, I think, is really, you know, it, a tribute to that aspect of it. Um, yeah. Nice. I'm in this really over romanticized um, mindset uh, in regards to dance as an art form because it, it's really Feldenkrais gave me the the way back in to having faith in art mm. because when I had my neck injury back in Gothenburg, <laughs> I was a, like. I would, you know, I was just so, is it the word dejected? Like, I, I, I just, you mm -hmm. know, I didn't even, I was so down because I did not, I felt that what I was doing my whole life was, had no meaning. Like, I didn't need to be. Yeah. What was I doing trying to be an artist? You know, it, it was just me learning steps, doing them to the best of my ability, people pay, come, and then I, I, I go home, right? Yeah. And when I read, like, film, so one of the major things that I took away from my film Christ training was that um, we might, what is the function of movement, right? And people will say, well, you know, to carry things, to, um, I don't know, to run away from danger, to be able to eat uh, but a, a major function that uh, enabled the human species to be so successful was our um, expressivity mm. our ability to communicate and yeah. there are people who don't communicate well because they only have certain ways and they're very rigid about it and it maybe works for only one audience but but those who are but you also have many successful people who are charming and charming is is a you know if you could write uh, record movements in space and timing down like a score you would see that charming people would have a different way of moving than 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 people who were who were less um, well well received by others. So right. then I realized ah expression it's not something that we can live without it is so important to not only my survival but the survival of our species this is what got us here right mm -hmm. and then i was able to make the bridge back into art and i you know then yeah. I, I i can i can really stand behind being an artist and you know through tiffany's um uh library i also like it, it, it's amazing just talking to her i'm like actually um, I think what I really want to help people feel is that how they can be artists of their own lives. You yeah. don't have to be performing on a stage with light on you, with people buying tickets to be in the audience in order to call yourself a, an artist, right? How you, how you greet people on the street, how you might stand tall or how you might be like ready to, you know, prepare to fight or something you can serve as a model for other people to you know as as um you know being someone who who can take their place in what an appropriate really, way what i really like about that is the applicableness of it to anyone that dances even to a really high level 
all the way down to someone that just wants to feel more of themselves through dancing, listening to some music, enjoying the expression of themselves in movement to music, yeah. you know, and that, um, you know, that that being often within the social sphere, but but also for your own pleasure, you know, some yeah. people just like to dance by themselves. That was a trend for a while, right? Um, you know, and I think that that, um, you know, what how you're describing it, I think it 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 beautif beautifully captures the fact that it applies equally well all the way along that scale from the person that is like high end performing ballerina on stage, you know, all the way down to someone that just wants to loves music and wants to dance, you know, and express mm -hmm. themselves. Um, and, so yeah, really, really great. And I like I really saw it in the dance context. You know, I was also um, working as a rehearsal director uh, for a company in Germany called Of Curious Nature, um, just about a year and a half ago. And uh, I really felt that I was made for that position because I love to solve problems and I love to understand why some things are just consistently hard for people. And mm -hmm. Feldenkrais really helped me to like zoom in. And so when people are like, oh, you just need to free up your head and neck and things, then I would start looking at the dancer's ankles and feet. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way that they will be able to do that without hurting themselves eventually because mm -hmm. the ankles are, um, yeah, they're not participating. They're not mobile. And and you and, and then from the fun cars perspective, I can say something like the nervous system does not know how to get how to how mm -hmm. to yeah work together or allow the 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 movement of the ankle to actually set the stage mm -hmm. <laughs> for yeah. the mobility of the neck stuff like that. Uh, that how so then I started to see these habits and so I saw in dance it was very it was it, it was every day going to the studio was an exercise for me. Why is this consistently hard? Why can this dancer not balance so well? And then like, oh, the ribs. Okay, no, they're okay. The shoulders are not moving. This is something that they don't know that is a possibility. And you can use a lot of words to correct, correct, correct. But you sometimes, you just need to lie down, do things that would, that you have to, um, clarify those movements on the floor come back so take it out of context come back and then more often than not you know the the stability the balance is there and more yeah. so another thing that's bringing what you're talking about how this is applicable to also people who are not professionals who also love to dance um so now I'm in this really um, exciting position that I'm a co-curator for the morning professional training, dance training here in Copenhagen, um, part of Danza Helena, it's called, this um, center that supports the freelance dance scene. And my co-curator, her name is Marie K, Marie Ko in uh, Danish, hope I said it right. And she is a house dance uh, teacher and performer like she's incredible mm -hmm. and this and and because and so we're programming uh what we call street and club rhythmical dances along with the classical contemporary um mm -hmm. techniques you know floor work release um modern classes ballet yeah because i had always lacked this functionality in my dancing because I was so aesthetically driven from my ballet background. So I had always known, like I should have done martial arts first. I should have done street and club rhythmical dances. And so what, so this, the, the blind spot for many people who want to do these kind of uh, dances with the groove, get the beat. And it's something I actually could not do when I was in ballet school. It was my huge blind spot and it's just this movement. Yeah, and anyone who's watching can try. How do you dance? How do you dance to music and feel cool, right? Yeah. And and I think we do need to feel cool. It's not superficial. We feel safe. We feel um, 
that that we belong that you know we can hold our ground so if you imagine you had a neck brace and you had to dance you know you had to go to them yeah you're already smiling it, it there's something odd about it because you're actually less able to balance and actually being able to do yeah. this it's you're rebalancing the whole time and this is where it's you're making me want to do it as you're doing it like yeah find a little and rhythm it's... <laughs> And it's funny because I, I also attribute it to being a cultural thing where there are many cultures where, you know, you should always have your head propped up high and, you know, it's it's like, how do you do, Leoma? Mm, okay, you know, like I come from a culture that is like that. And being in ballet class, I somehow also interpreted that I, can, I couldn't really move the neck in, 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 in a very supple way. And so... Actually, I think it is so healthy to be doing all these um, these rhythmical dances yeah. because you're actually juicing up the spine all the time, and you're finding your feet. You're finding your feet, and you and there are many of these these um, variations. And actually, this is somatic training as well. So, many so ways. I'd, to I'd deal like with I'd gravity. like to point out at this point that Paul has an Instagram channel, and if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to uh, see Paul, you know, expressing himself in these ways, specifically listening to r and I think at the moment is your current uh, trend. Um, mm -hmm. You can check him out on Instagram as well. Um, Paul, it's been it's been fascinating. Um, I've really enjoyed talking to you. I think you've got a lot to share on this subject. And I hope no, I hope at some point that you will um you know, maybe have a, a lesson in relating to what you just talked about um, so that we can get that on the YouTube channel for the, um, for the Third of Christ Guild of North America as well. Um, that would be really, really great. So um, encourage you to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I don't know if there's anything that you want to um, kind of finish up with. Um, <laughs> well, I just encourage everyone, like, as I said, keep growing uh and yeah that I, I hope you start understanding how you can be an artist of your life and how I define that is that you have choice you just need to have a way of seeing all that so please try some Feldenkrais um Great. yeah paint with your being create amazing thank you so much Paul Thank you.